Hey guys, Sarithi here with another tutorial and today we're covering the terrain tools. So let's get right in here. You can see we have a bunch of different options and I will just show you how they work. So you have the pull function and as you can see right now it pulls towards you. So if you don't want that, uh, let's get this back to how it was, you can turn on this uh, surface lock and this way it builds straight up. So that is really nice. Then you have the push function, that is the exact opposite of course, and you can create a nice lake or something like that. I could literally do this for days, I'm pretty sure that I did that once in Minecraft. <laughs> but you have flattened to foundation, uh, as you can see over here something got screwed up a little bit. You can just select the height of the foundation you want it to be on and drag it along and this way it restores to that height. Alright then, the next thing you should know about is the intensity and the size and you can adjust this with, you can decrease it with minus and uh, increase it with equals and the size with the brackets, so left bracket and right bracket to adjust the size. Something else I want to show you with flatten to foundation, so you can also just select this part over here and it flattens to there, but if you select it up here and drag it down, you can see it tries to get up to that height and you can get some really dynamic looks for mountains and stuff like that. You can lower the intensity of course and you have some more control. I've been doing this for a while now and I feel pretty comfortable with the high intensity but as you can see it's really rough right now and you can also just smooth it out and lower the intensity and get some yeah really cool shapes in here. So you select the point from here and drag it down and it gets way up there. You can also do it from the other side, so select the foundation on the ground over here and decrease the size a little bit this way or you can drag it out and this is just a really nice trick for you to have probably to create some cool landscapes. Let me get this closed up because I feel like I have to. <laughs> alright, alright, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> alright, so let's go to uh, flatten to surface. This one works uh, kind of the same like flatten to foundation, but this one sticks to uh, one angle and this one angles to the point you're facing with your brush. You can create some nice slopes and you kind of just have to feel it out what works best for you. I almost never use this one. So then you have chisel. This one is really nice. Uh, sometimes you just want to decrease it a little bit and it chisels away at the angle you're facing. Then you have the smooth tool. This one is uh, very nice and you can see everything is so rough right now. I always like to do this after I make a rough layout. Just smooth it out a little bit. Not too much though because it will become very unnatural, very smooth. <laughs> um, but you can also fix that with the next tool we'll be using. But just smooth it out a little bit, create some natural shapes. So like I said, you have the roughing tool now, so here you have some more control over where you want it to be somewhat rougher and where you want it to be somewhat smoother. So this way uh, you get some nice natural shapes in here and yeah, you can make some very pretty landscape. Then for painting, this is something you absolutely want to do last because when you go back to the terrain tools it will erase all the paint that you've just done. Maybe you spend a lot of time making some nice uh, layers of paints and then it's just gone. <laughs> so you absolutely want to do that last. Then every map has its own paint colors. Uh, I mean the deciduous map right now. So the paints that you see over here in the menu are exclusive to this map. So let me just show you a bunch, bunch of those. Uh, the intensity is really high, so let me set that a little bit lower. And you can see you can create some nice layered effects here. You can get some sand in here and uh, change the color a little bit. Get some grass back in here. And you can see how nice the transition is uh, when you spend some time on this. Also a good thing to know is it's always best to paint from uh, top to bottom so you won't get any unwanted paints on uh, the bottom side. And this last one restores it to how it was. So if you don't like what you did and you want to try again, you can just easily restore it to how it was. I often just use the smooth tool for this, I <laughs> don't know why that happens but it's kind of a weird tick I guess. Alright, for water we have, uh, let me show you in here, that's why I made it like this. <laughs> 
So you see the blue line over here. Let me switch to this side. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. You have the blue line. This marks where you can place the water. And let me show you on this side. Over here you see the red line. And this is obviously where you can place it. Because you would flood your park. And that's not even possible in this game. Because the water is just a texture. So as you can see over here. This is how you place the water. Very easy. And you can see it's just a texture. So there is not actually water in here. Delete it with the right mouse button and uh, I will show you the rough water over here. Let me put it on play because it's amazing. It looks so good. So let me get that one out and I will show you the standing water. This one has a little bit of a different color. Uh, this can be really nice in some situations. And then you have the dirty water which looks really dirty. <laughs> Alright, lastly, uh, let me get back the calm water in here. It looks really nice and tropical. So you have the scenery lock. And I have to go back to sculpting because it was grayed out. So you have the scenery lock. And I will get a blueprint in here. Let me get one of my own. Let's see, let's do the mausoleum. It's nice and big so I can show you. And you can see very clearly what it does. So let me get that one in here. Back to the terrain tools and the pull function. Uh, let's say you want to cover this building up with terrain. And if you don't have the scenery lock on and you get it up. Let me put up the intensity. You can see you go straight through your building. <laughs> now that's, this is something you most of the time definitely don't want. So let me get this back to how it was and turn the scenery lock on this way it creates a nice gap between the building and uh, the terrain and this way you can just very easily edit it from the inside if that's something that you want or this way at least it won't show on the inside uh, if you want to cover it up by a mountain or something like that all right that is it for this episode guys thank you so much for watching you can always show your support by subscribing to the channel or liking and leaving a comment uh, it really helps us out a bunch so thank you so much for watching and i will see you on the next one let me just mess around with this a little bit longer just a little bit i can never stop when i do this all right all right that's enough <laughs>